Okay, here we go. Buckle up, buttercup. I'm going to reach a level of honesty that I don't often achieve in online lectures, and I'm going to say that this is starting to get super complicated. Um, so make sure that when you go back over this lecture that you take good notes and that you read the chapter very carefully and make sure that you understand everything fully because it's about to get a little crazy around here. Here we go. Binary eutectic systems. All right. Binary, of course, that means two components. Eutectic is a new fun word that means easily melted. And so what we're going to have here is we're going to look at some alloys where the minimum melting point of the alloy at that eutectic point um, and the, at the eutectic composition is lower than the melting points of the individual components. So the fun news is this makes great solder, right? So we're going to look today at uh, the tin lead um, phase diagram, among some others, and you might have heard of tin lead solders. Um, tin lead solder has kind of fell out of favor, of course, because of the whole people get poisoned by lead thing, but um, it's still used. Okay, so here we go. So let's look at the um, copper-silver phase diagram first um, and point out what these phase diagrams look like and the regions and make sure that we kind of get the overall picture before delving into the specifics. All right, so here we go. We've got on the left-hand side an alpha phase. This alpha phase is basically the structure of the copper, okay, because along the bottom here you see that we're, we're plotting increasing weight percent of silver as you move to the right. So here on the left hand side we're all copper, so this alpha phase is basically copper, pure copper structure. Now as you move to the right you can see on this side a beta phase. The beta phase is basically the structure of silver. Okay, so this is all silver over here, and this has the same structure that you would expect for a pure silver lattice. Now, in the middle here, you have this alpha plus beta region. See, silver and copper, they don't want to mix together. Um, metals might not want to mix together for various violations of those hume rothery rules. Either their atomic radii aren't the same, they don't want to pack in the same kind of crystalline structure, maybe one's FCC and one's BCC. They have different electronegativities. For whatever reason, they don't form this really pretty perfectly mixed solid solution. And so what that means is instead of forming a structure where everything can go anywhere, it likes to segregate. You like to have your alpha phase over here and your beta phase over here. But if you can't get that, right, then you're going to mix together and form little regions of alpha phase and little regions of beta phase. Okay? That's what's happening here in this um, copper-silver phase diagram. Now, we also have up here the pure liquid, okay? That's pretty easy to understand. You melt it, right? Now we have the intermediate regions. In between the liquid and the alpha plus beta phase, you've got your liquid plus alpha phase right here, and you've got your liquid plus beta phase right here, okay? Hopefully you understand that. Okay, um, let's go over a little bit more vocabulary here. We've got our liquidus line. Our liquidus line, we've talked about before, is the boundary in between the liquid and the liquid plus alpha or liquid plus beta phase. We've got our solidus line, and that's the ba boundary between the alpha phase and the liquid plus alpha phase. That's right here and right here between the liquid plus beta and the beta phase. We also have a new line. It is called the solvus line, and that's the barrier in between the alpha phase and the alpha plus beta phase or the alpha plus beta phase and the beta phase. Okay, so that's called a solvus line. And then you might also notice this horizontal line here, which is a eutectic isotherm, okay? So this is a eutectic system, an easily melted system. And you can see that there's a horizontal line that distinguishes the alpha plus beta phase from the liquid plus alpha and the liquid plus beta phases. Okay, so that's here. All right, that horizontal line is called the eutectic isotherm. Isotherm just means same temperature, of course. Horizontal lines on these phase diagrams are at the same temperature. All right, so a eutectic reaction is when a liquid changes into a solid with two distinct phases. What they look like on phase diagrams is kind of V's. So you can see that there's a V that forms here, okay, from this liquid 
to this alpha plus beta phase. So when you're at the eutectic composition, which for copper silver occurs at 71.9% by weight of silver, right, which means the rest is um, uh, copper, right there at that composition, as you drop down in temperature from hot temperatures and you cross that eutectic isotherm at 779 degrees Celsius, then you go from a pure liquid phase to the segregated alpha plus beta phases, okay? That's a eutectic reaction. Oftentimes they're written like a chemical reaction, okay? So you have this liquid going into alpha plus beta. And it's reversible, of course, if you heated it back up, um, you could go back to a liquid. So the arrow has two sides there, all right? Now it's important to understand that um, when you cross that eutectic isotherm, that your composition of your alpha phase and your beta phase can be understood by looking at the intersection of your tie line, which here is the eutectic isotherm itself, with the other phases. So when you cross the tie line right here, then you look and it intersects with the alpha phase at 8% by weight, okay? So that means that your alpha phase is going to have 8% by weight of silver. Now your beta phase, if you trace that over to where it intersects with the beta, it intersects at 91.2% by weight of silver. So your alpha phase is mostly copper and only 8% by weight of silver, and your beta phase is mostly silver, 91.2 weight percent. All right, so that gives you the compositions of your phases. Remember, the composition of the phase can be done by figuring out where that tie line intersects with the boundary. All right, so let's go over this example. Um, this one looks at a different phase diagram. It's that lead 10 system that I promised you earlier. It's also a eutectic. Note the temperatures here. The temperature of the eutectic isotherm is 183 degrees C. So that's actually a pretty low temperature for a metal to melt, right? Which is why it makes such a great solder, okay. Um, for a 40% by weight alloy at 150C, determine the phases present, the phase compositions, and the relative amount of each phase, okay? So you can ruin anything, right, by putting math to it. So here we go. Um, if you're at 150C, that's shown here between the 100 and 200, where I've got the tie line constructed, okay? And it's a 40% by weight 10. Here on this uh, diagram, we start off with pure lead at the right, and go all the way to pure 10 as we move to the right. So 40% is here at the purple dashed line at 40% by weight, okay? So here's my timeline, RS, constructed all along uh, that horizontal isotherm right there. Okay, so that puts me right here in this uh, at this dot, which puts me in the alpha plus beta phase regime. So the phases present are solid alpha and solid beta. That's my phase composition, or that's my phases present. Now the compositions of those phases, how much percentage of 10 I have for each one of those alpha and beta phases, I can figure out by looking at the intersection of my tie line um, with the phase transformation. So when I go from the alpha plus beta to the pure alpha region, if I look at the intersection of my tie line at that point, that'll give me the weight percent, I'm sorry, the percentage of alpha that I have for that. So the composition of my alpha phase will be 11% by weight 10. Now if I look at the intersection with the tie line on the opposite side with the beta phase over here, that'll give me the composition of my beta phase and that is 99% by weight of 10. I'm estimating of course, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what these values are, but it looks like about 11 and about 99 there, so that's my estimate, okay? so. 11% by weight 10 for the alpha, 99% by weight 10 for the beta. Okay, now, if I want the relative amount of each phase, that's when I need to apply my lever rule on my tie line, okay? So the weight of my alpha and the weight of my beta I get from doing the, comp, uh, the lever rule computation on the tie line. So the weight of the alpha, if my tie line here is R and S, then the weight of my alpha phase would be S over R plus S, okay? So reading off, um, I've got for the length of S, 99 minus 40, right? And then divided by the total length of my tie line, R plus S, which is 99 minus 11. 
and then I plug that in and I get 0 0.67, which would give me 67% by weight alpha phase. Now, if I've got 67% by weight alpha phase, that means the rest is beta or 33%. But just to comfort yourself, if you'd like, you can do the other tie line computation, which is R over R plus S, and that gives you 0.33, of course. Okay, let's say that we're at a different temperature, okay? Let's say that we're above the eutectic isotherm um, temperature. We're at 220 degrees C. So now, let's determine the phases present, the compositions, and the relative amount of each phase there. Okay, here we go. If I'm right here at 220 and I'm at 40%, that puts me in this L plus alpha phase region, okay? So I, my, my phases present are solid alpha phase and liquid. Done. Next to phase compositions, now I construct my tie line and I looked at my intersection of my tie line with the neighboring phase, okay? So for my weight percent of 10 for my alpha phase, I look at the intersection with the alpha phase region over here and I get 17% by weight 10. Of course, that's an estimate. I'm just eyeballing it, okay? For my liquid phase, I look at the intersection with this liquidus line here, okay? And so that I'm estimating is about 46% by weight 10 for my liquid phase, okay? So my liquid phase has 46% by weight 10 and my alpha phase has 17% by weight 10. Now if I want the relative amount of each phase, then I have to construct my tie line and use my lever rule computation. So for the weight of the alpha phase, that would be CL minus C naught, okay, um, which is 46 minus 40, so it's basically S over R plus S, okay. So here I have 46 minus 40 over the total length of my tie line, which is 46 minus 17, and that gives me 0.21 or 21% by weight alpha, okay. If I'm 21% by weight alpha, that means the rest is liquid, but if you'd like, you can do the computation for the lever rule for the other side and get 0.79, okay, or 79%. All right, let's do some more, because this can be super confusing, and examples are really helpful for straightening things out in your head. Cite the phases present and the phase compositions for the following alloys, right? This is our copper-silver phase diagram, and it's asking you about a 55% by weight silver um, composition. And it's asking you first for 900C, and then for that same weight percentage, but at 800C. Okay, so 900C, 55% by weight. So here's the 55 right here. This is my 50, 55, and then I go up at 900 Celsius. There's a isotherm right there for 900. And so that puts me at that green star. That's where I am, the green star right there. Now this is the liquid regime, okay? So this is a pure material. It's all liquid. It's not a mix of phases. If it's a pure material and not a mix of phases, then I can say for sure for the liquid that that means that it's 55% silver and 45% copper, and it's a liquid. Done. Straightforward. Okay. Now the next one's not so straightforward. That's asking for that same percent composition, but at 800C. 800C would put us in this alpha plus liquid re region down here, okay? So that's covered on the next slide. So on this slide, here's my tie line. It's in red and green right here um, at the isotherm for 800. And the red meets the green for the tie line at the percent composition that I'm at, 55%. So I've got alpha plus liquid phases. And the percentage of my liquid will be this is at 55, it intersects on this side at 8, and then I estimated that it intersects my liquidus line over here at 67, okay? So the weight of the liquid would be 55 minus 8%, I'm subtracting off the red portion here of my tie line, and then divided by the total length of my tie line, 67 minus 8%. When I do that, I get 0.797, so about 80% or so liquid and 20% solid alpha phase. I hope that's clear. Okay, microstructural developments in eutectic systems. Here we go. Here's what it looks like. Let's say that we're to the left of the composition where your eutectic isotherms um, intersects your, your primary alpha phase. Okay, so we're to the left of that concentration. 
So let's look at a very low concentration percentage of the other material, like less than 2% by weight of 10 for the lead 10 um, diagram. Now let's look what happens when we start from the molten material and cool it down. So we start out and we're all liquid and everything's fine, and then we cross over um, this transition temperature and we move into a liquid plus alpha region. So what happens there is these little uh, nodules of alpha phase start to form within the molten liquid. And then as you cool it down even further, those nodules grow and grow until they meet neighboring nodules and now you're in the solid phase regime. Okay, so we're in the solid phase regime and we have all alpha particles. So it's polycrystalline material with grains of the alpha phase having a composition of less than 2% by weight, say, of 10. All right, well, that's not very interesting. That is almost like a pure molten material going to a pure material. So not super interesting, not different. Let's move a little bit further to the right, increasing our composition of our weight percent of 10 a little bit. Okay, so we're in the molten material, whatever. We cool it off. Now we've got these little alpha phase particles starting to form. Okay, now here's where the really interesting part comes. We transform over, we form a poly polycrystal material with alpha phase particles. But now we cross over another transition line and we're in the alpha plus beta phase. So what that means is that we've got these alpha, primarily alpha crystalline structures, but we have these little particulates or precipitates almost of beta phase within the alpha phase matrix. Okay, so we have these little precipitates of beta phase in our alpha phase. Okay, so that's what happens there. Now, at the eutectic concentration right here, that's when the fun really starts. Okay, so we're in our molten state. Okay, then we cross at the eutectic um, temperature and composition and we solidify. What do we solidify into? This cool zebra striped lamellar structure looking thing right here. All right. It's um, very uh, indicative of these eutectics, and as you'll see in the next lecture, eutectoids as well, microstructures. It forms these, what are called lamellae, a lamellar structure um, as it cools. Okay. So you'll have these domains, and the lamellar, the lamellae will change direction, change their angle as they cross the crystalline boundary there, which is kind of fun. Now, why does it do that? Well, the alpha phase and the beta phase, they don't like each other, okay? They might be even different structures. One might be FCC, one might be BCC, who knows, right? But they definitely have different crystalline spacings and they have different characteristics, different physical properties. So they really don't want to intermix, intermingle, okay? So what happens is you'll get a region, alpha phase region that's primarily lead, okay? And the tin doesn't wanna go there because it doesn't like to fit inside of that primarily lead alpha phase region. And so it'll move away the, in the liquid. Of course, diffusion can happen a lot easier than it does in the solid. So as the solidification occurs, the material in the liquid will preferentially move and absorb at sites um, where it, it's happy. Okay, so the tin will move to the beta phase and the lead will move to the alpha phase and these lamellae will grow outward as the material solidifies. So that's what happens. Okay, so what happens if you're not exactly at your eutectic concentration? What happens if you're to the left or to the right? Okay, so let's go through that. Well, you start off with a molten material and then you cool down. And as you cool down, you move into this liquid plus alpha phase region right here. All right, that means that you get these little alpha phase particles that begin to form within your liquid. You continue cooling, okay? Once you cross that eutectic isotherm, what happens is the lamellae form, all right? So you have this, what's called primary alpha particles or pro-eutectoid particles, or pro-eutectic particles, pardon me, pro-eutectic particles, eutectoids the next lecture, calm down. So we have these primary alpha pro-eutectic particles, okay? And then everything that was liquid in this liquid plus alpha region, right at that eutectic isotherm, that becomes the lamellae, the lamellar structure, okay? So then you have these layered eutectic alpha, eutectic beta 
phases for the rest of the material. So the structure looks like that. Now, if you're to the right and you have a higher concentration of your, uh, say for example here, 10, then your pro-eutectic particles are the beta phase and not the alpha phase, okay? So these are scanning electron microscope images of these different um, phases. And so here on the left, you can see that you're in the hypo-eutectic region. Hypo means less than the eutectic concentration. Okay, And so your pro-eutectic particles are alpha phase particles. And then surrounding your alpha phase dark particles, you've got your um, lamellae. Okay, right at the eutectic, you've got no nodules, all lamellae. Right? And then the hyper-eutectic, which is the higher concentration, you've got your pro-eutectic beta phase particles surrounded by lamellae. All right, so that's what happens. It's kind of beautiful, right? Um, it looks a little bit like a couch from the 70s. Okay. Okay, so I can ruin anything with math. So <laughs> let's figure out what the weight percentages of these materials would be. You can figure out what the, the mass fraction or the weight fraction of your eutectic portion is, and also your pro-eutectic particles. All right, so let's say that you're at composition C4 here. So we're looking at the hypo-eutectic stuff, okay? You're at composition C4. Well, what happens is you're moving from this alpha plus liquid region into the alpha plus beta region. So your pro-eutectic alpha particles have formed before you cross this eutectic isotherm. And then everything that was a liquid becomes the lamellae or your eutectic microconstituent. That's also called the lamellae, eutectic microconstituent. So right above that eutectic isotherm, for a material with composition C4, the alpha phase particles form, and the remaining liquid phase will become the eutectic microconstituent after the temperature drops below the isotherm. That means that if I'm trying to figure out the weight of my eutectic versus the weight of my pro-eutectic alpha particles, then my tie line would be this P plus Q tie line right here. And it would go from 18.3% right here all the way to 61.9%. Okay, this is only for uh, lead 10 if you had a different phase diagram. It would go from whatever the intersection concentration is to whatever the eutectic concentration is. Okay, just depends upon what you're looking at. So that would mean that the weight of my eutectic microconstituent would be P over P plus Q. And the weight of my um, pro-eutectic alpha particle would be Q over P plus Q. Okay? Now this is only good for concentrations that form eutectic microstructures. If, for example, in this isotherm, I were less than 18.3%, okay, then um, I'm not going to get that. I have an alpha phase, and it would go to alpha phase with those little particulates of the beta phase in it. It wouldn't form the lamellae. Okay? You have to be between 18.3 and 97.8 to form that lamellar microstructure. All right, now, these formula, these give the concentrations or the percent compositions for total amount of alpha and total amount of beta phase. So for example, the weight of the alpha phase that I show here in this formula, that includes the primary alpha particles or the pro-eutectic particles and the eutectic microconstituents. So it sums up all possible contributions to alpha phase in there. Okay. Also, these formulae are only good for concentrations between the 18.3 uh, and the 97.8. It doesn't help so much with uh, this guy right here, okay? So here's my tie line. It goes P, Q to R, right? P, Q to R. And the weight of my alpha phase would be Q plus R over P plus Q plus R. And the weight of my beta phase would be, you know, one minus that, or P over P plus Q plus R. All right? Hope that helps. So, let's put this into action. For an ally of, ally, alloy of 40% by weight of 10, then we could figure out, first of all, just above the eutectic transformation temperature, what the compositions were, and then what the relative weights were for the alpha and the liquid phases. So let's do that. So we go here and we're dropping and we're just above our eutectic isotherm. 
Now the intersections with the eutectic isotherm and the alpha and the liquid phases are at 18.3 and 61.9%. So what that means is that um, for a 40% by weight 10, right above the eutectic isotherm, I'm going to have alpha particles. And those alpha particles will have a concentration of 18.3% by weight of 10. My liquid phase will be, looking at the intersection, 61.9% by weight of 10. Okay, so that's my composition. Now the weight of the phases, that's different. I use the tie line to figure that out. So for the tie line, I'm going to do, for the weight of the alpha phase, 61.9 minus 40 over 61.9 minus 18.3. And that gives me 0.5. So that means that 50% of my uh, total weight is alpha particles. And of course, that also means that 50% by weight of my total is liquid. Okay? So 50% is liquid. Of that liquid, 18.3% of that liquid is 10. 50% is alpha particles, so on and so forth. Okay? Hope that's clear. Wait, yeah. All right, so um, once I go below my eutectic temperature, okay, now my tie line runs from 18.3 all the way over to 97.8. And when I do that, I'm figuring out the total composition of the material, the total percent composition of the alpha and the beta phases. Okay, so here I go. I'm dropping down. Okay, and if I look at it, then my uh, weight percentage I can use by the tie line. I've got 97.8 minus 40 over 97.8 minus 18.3, and that will give me the total amount of alpha that I've got, including the pro-eutectic alpha and the eutectic. Okay, so I've got the nodules and the stripes. And that gives me 0.73, or 73%. So 73% of my material is in the alpha phase. And that means, of course, that 27% is in the beta phase. Now, of the stuff that's in the alpha phase, if I go back to where it intersects my next phase, that's at 18.3, so that of the stuff in that alpha phase, it's 18.3 weight percent 10. Of the stuff that's in the beta phase, which is only 27% of the material, 97.8% of that is 10. Okay? So the beta phase is 97.8% by weight 10. The beta phase is 27% of the total material present. I hope that's clear. It's really tough to keep straight, I think, what is the weight of the phase itself, because that's a percentage there, and then what percent by weight of the material of the atom is the phase. So let's go over it one more time. Remember that you get the composition of the phase by looking at where the tie line intersects the next phase. So here we go down. We're on this uh, lead 10 phase diagram. As we drop down from the liquid phase to the liquid plus alpha phase, now right above this eutectic, right, right above this eutectic isotherm, I can trace it back, right? It intersects the alpha phase right here at 18.3% by weight. So that means that my alpha phase particles are 18.3% by weight 10, okay? Okay, now once I cross the eutectic isotherm, okay, then I get this uh, lamellar structure. If I trace it back to where it intersects, it's about 18.3. If I'm just below it, it's still super close. So that means that the alpha phase in here is 18.3% by weight 10. If I want to figure out the percentage of my beta phase, I trace it to the other side, okay, the other side to where it intersects the beta region. When I do that, I get 97.8% by weight of 10 for my beta phase. Okay, it's tough, it's confusing. Make sure that you go over it, make sure that you read the chapter, and I'll see you in class.